OCC Magazine. We are sitting here with our special guest for the day, Miss Sandy Patty, and are happy to have Miss Nicole C. Mullen. So thanks for being with us. Thanks today. for having me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the first thing I wanted to ask y'all is I just really haven't heard the story about how you guys maybe first met or maybe first started really working together and getting to know each other. We first met. Do you remember this Remind in New Orleans? Oh. We were at at some CBA okay and we were all at a restaurant all the different artists and we were like I don't know you you don't know me we know no one and we were just that's where we first yes. met yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but where we really really yes. connected was with women of faith yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and Nicole C <sighs> well first of all she stole the song I wanted I know my Redeemer lives. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. And she stole all the songs. <laughs> <laughs> One to a zillion. No, 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 I, I just love that song yeah, so, so much. But anyway, but when we really got to know each other was Women of Faith. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I just, I just love this girl. She's my sister. And so, I love her. I can't say it enough. I really do. Um, yeah, I won't jump ahead, but, but we had a great time. I'm faith tour. We did. We really did. And okay. just impacted my family, all yours, all your kids and all my kids. kids. We were all kind of out there on the a road tribe. at the same time. <laughs> oh, kids. All the kids. Yes. Oh, wait, yes. here they come. One yes. bus for Nicole and Sandy's kids. Yeah, <laughs> Nicole, I would love to hear from you how Sandy's uh, career, but then also how her life and her the ways that she's ministered her music over people, how that's personally influenced you and impacted you, your career, personal life. Yeah, now I can go on for days for that. With that, um, growing up, you know, we listened to Sandy, and of mm-hmm. course, we're not that that far apart in age. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we just pretend. I just pretend. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but but growing up, we were both really really young, and um, we listened to her, and she was also one of the first people that I saw not just minister to the hearing, but also to the hearing impaired, those who couldn't. And she signed. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing you do We Shall Behold Him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness. (laughs) I'm going to be like her in many ways. Mm -hmm. And so she inspired me. And so now I do a little bit of it um, because she did a lot of it. Is that why you did it? start doing it on My Redeemer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I never knew that. Yeah. That's really, and I, then I saw Reba Rambo do it. Well, and I grew up, and yeah, that's Reba, why yeah. I wanted to and do it. it. Yeah, yeah. Huh. You know something. Uh, and so she was one of those people for me. And then just watching her and her life, not just her voice on stage, but then getting to know her off the stage. Not only did she become a great friend, but she's a sister, you know. Mm. And to see her humility, even in women of faith, at women of faith, mm. when we would go out on the road, of course, every every night and every afternoon, she'd bring the house down. That's a given. Of course, she brought the house down. But on top of that, her vulnerability, her honesty, her love for the Lord, her ability to walk the earth even as she drew you toward heaven, you know, Mm -hmm. seeing that marriage of the two just inspired me to say, okay, you know what? When I take the stage, make sure that you not, that you never water anything down, but that you break it down, that you bring it down to where the people are and you Mm -hmm. serve it as a platter of grace, as I watched her do. Mm-hmm. And so it was an inspiration to me. And so it, it allowed me and it helped me to up my game a bit, you know, in a sandy fashion, <laughs> you know. And just to, you just being able to sit among her, to glean from her, to watch her and her family, to watch her and her husband, see how they love each other and her children. I love her for many reasons. And every time we see each other, it's a giggle fest and it's a it hugger fest and it's a catch-up girl fest. It fest. is. We're trying to keep it together now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, Wait till the camera's off. <laughs> it is. It's just, it's the sweetest thing. And, you know... Everybody has a story. You have a story. Yes. I have a story. And I loved seeing you kind of just step into some life yes. stuff of yours and and how that just began to really free you on stage to yes. just, you know, we always joke about your arms. Okay. We seriously, <laughs> like, right? We all, I yeah. always joke. Always. And I, whatever. If it bothers you, I'm sorry. Or whatever. I'll ask forgiveness <laughs> later. <laughs> Because, you know, everyone in in the arena is like, what? But I've seen this strength come here in you. And that just makes me so proud of you as a sister to see that you realize you're worth it. You're worth being treasured and loved by the Almighty. It's just just so awesome. You know, Sandy, the mentoring 
theme has come throughout today. I mean, Natalie Grant was here and, and Michael Tate, of course. And, and what's interesting to me is, yeah, there's not always a huge age difference, but there is, there does seem to be uh, this look to you. Stage difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's age, but you're at a different stage. You know? That's yeah. good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Stage, not, not just platform, on the stage, no, but, but yeah. Yeah. The stage in life. Yeah. Hold yeah, on, I'm I gotta write that down. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, because of that yeah. stage difference, there's mm -hmm. always been uh, this, I think, desire to uh, ask questions of you mm -hmm. because you have modeled your life in the spotlight, too, because you've mm -hmm. allowed those vulnerabilities. So, I, I see, you know, even here, yeah. This mentorship. What do you receive when when you mentor when you speak into? Mm -hmm. um, I think we've talked a little bit about how that influences your own pathway through your career and personal yeah. life. But really, what does that? Is that something you desire? Is that something that's difficult? That's a burden? Or is that? And how does that point you spiritually, professionally? Yeah, I don't. I I never really set out to say, I am going to mentor and I'm going to mentor five people, and, you know, these are them. It just, I just have always felt like God has sort of brought people mm -hmm. in, across my path, mm -hmm. and that I do think you need people in your life who are just a little farther down the road, a little different Absolutely. stage, as you Absolutely. said. And I wish mm -hmm. I had had that mm -hmm. when I was a young artist. Wow. And so I kind of feel like that's a little bit of the motive. Mm -hmm. I do have eight kids, so I feel like, you know, I have five daughters mm. that I mentor. Yeah. But um, I just I just feel like every once in a while, we all need somebody to come mm. alongside and go, yeah. it's okay, yeah. you got this, yeah. you can do this, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, you and I have talked some heavy stuff. Yeah. You just need to know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And some of those things, I was a little farther down the path than you. Yeah. And to just be able to say, you know what? It's hard right now, but it's going to be okay. Oh. It's going to be okay. Yeah. So just yeah. trust that. Mm -hmm. And you kind of like, you just need somebody to say, come out, come out, wherever yeah. you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I'm just, I'm just going to put this out here, Go too. Um, I think one of the things that we have been able to converse about that I really wish Christians could be comfortable with, and that is race. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have yeah. taught me mm -hmm. so much yeah. that it doesn't, it describes, I love you say, it describes you, it doesn't it define you. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like you have to walk yeah. around and go, I don't see it. Either. Right, I don't see it. You go, no, that's yeah, beautiful. beautiful, it's there, Absolutely. but don't stop there. Absolutely. And our youngest son is African American, mm -hmm. Native American, and mm -hmm. Auntie Nicole has yes. just, you know, mm -hmm. really helped speak into him mm -hmm. in ways that I can't. Mm -hmm. And so that's another way I think that this friendship has been very unique. And I really do kind of wish the church that we could really talk about it mm -hmm. freely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I appreciate mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. helping me raise my son mm -hmm. and just speaking into me and helping begin the conversation. Because I think a lot of times we don't know how to start the true. conversation. True. And so then we just don't have a conversation. Very true. Or we so. have it privately amongst uh -huh. ourselves. Yeah. And it never crosses any lines mm -hmm. yeah. or any other barriers. Yeah. Or tests any boundaries. Yeah. The conversation is always, to me, uh, conversation sparks you know, questions and curiosity. And all of that, to me, is a way that we open ourselves up to the great mystery of who God is. I think what you're saying here, uh, being unable to really talk mm -hmm. race uh, in the church, mm -hmm. to some degree, is our desire to keep God boxed in. It's yeah. where we feel mm -hmm. safe and comfortable. To actually unleash God mm -hmm. is then to explore all these topics. Yeah. And that's something you guys, I feel like, through your music, yeah. music is mm -hmm. such a wonderful mm -hmm. unifier because you think about even, uh, I think about like Nashville's in the, Nashville in the 60s with the Motown, where there was not lodging for African Americans, but right. Motown was a huge client here. Music brought everyone together on the same stage. Yeah. There was no, there was no, um, there was difference, and yeah. that was celebrated, mm -hmm. but uh, the heart remained the same. So how do you feel like music mm -hmm. is a tool and a resource uh, in bringing people to that way through mm -hmm. race and through other issues, mm -hmm. which then brings us uh, closer to God? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't realize until many years later that after Larnell Harris and I sang together, mm -hmm. that was not a cool thing to do. Wow. wow. For a white woman <laughs> yeah. and a black oh, man true, 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 to true, sing true, together. True. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're like, this is yeah. the eighties, yeah. seventies. Yeah. 
okay, maybe six months, <laughs> whatever. No. <laughs> but, you know, I think just modeling, mm-hmm. modeling, Absolutely. first of all, yeah. um, is where is where it starts a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And uh, for people to just go, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I see. So Nicole's got, she's got these kids who have darker skin dancing. She's got these kids who have paler skin dancing. Yeah. But you know what? They're just all kids. And yeah. sometimes, here's the thing. I think we're afraid to talk about it because it first comes out really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And you think, I don't want to say this if I yeah. offend. And I think if we continue to establish a safe place. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then we can talk about it, and you can overlook maybe a stupid way I might Absolutely. say something, or, or vice versa. Vice versa. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. But I didn't know that for the mm-hmm. longest time. And Larnell said, "Oh yeah," mm-hmm. like you know, wow. he said, "Oh yeah." yeah. So then I just started grabbing his hand exactly. while we were saying. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. You know, I'll, I'll say this: I'm working on a book about this very topic. I love it. It's about like multicultural sisterhood, especially Mm -hmm. like how do we navigate the Mm -hmm. waters and how do we start the conversations and how do we say the awkward things without making the other person feel right or guilty or anything of that or doing this, but how can we really invite Mm -hmm. it so that we can step over the boundary of being just friends or acquaintances to friends mm-hmm. and then from friends to sisters mm-hmm. and then really because we're family mm-hmm. you know especially those who are the household of god we are mm-hmm. part of the same kingdom black white mm-hmm. you know gray doesn't matter you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. blue i mean really the hues of our skin should not determine the color of our heart you know and really the blood that flows through our veins and so really and, and like we said before we're able to see our color mm-hmm. But not stop there because it's not our definition; it's only our description. Mm-hmm. But can I speak to something really quickly? Sure, you can. About something you said earlier about Sandy um, being a mentor. I can't tell you the many occasions that you reached out to me out of the blue by text, phone call, voicemail, and to just let me know that you're thinking about me, praying for me, giving me a scripture, picking up the phone, and encouraging me. Like how much it really meant to me. Mm-hmm. Like for real. Um, Because we know there are are friends and family members that we have around us that we can talk to about a lot of things. But then as artists sometimes, Mm -hmm. there's like this other section of your heart and your life that you don't always have somebody to converse with or say, or to be able to say, no, I've been there. Mm -hmm. And I get it from many points of view. Mm -hmm. You know, I get it from, you know, the public saying this about you, this this perception Mm -hmm. here and you're at home and just the, the... the different ingredients that go into that. So for her to be able to speak that into my life willingly and not for me to have to feel like, well, if I call Sandy, I'm bugging her. You know, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want, you know. Mm-hmm. But for her, oftentimes taking the step saying, hey, little sis, I'm thinking of you, mm-hmm. which opened up the floodgates for me to be able to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> and her to be, you know, just a, just a good, godly, big sister, who spoke truth and who speaks truth into my life. And, and sometimes just listening, you know, um, and if you need to get your finger mm-hmm. not like this, you can do that. But for the most part, just <laughs> encouragement. And then on, on the stage, you know, when I would be up on the stage at Women of Faith, um, oftentimes it was her encouragement that gave me the courage to go back up there the next weekend mm-hmm. and to do the same and to be vulnerable again and mm-hmm. to just to be honest with the truth that was going on in my mm-hmm. life. And so... Um, so I'm, I'm just forever grateful mm. to you for that, mm. you know, and that mm. is huge. You know, I don't know if it felt huge to you, but it was very huge on my mm. side. So I thank you for that. No, I, just, so. I love you. Yeah. And I want to so, be like that for somebody else in my life. You know what? Yeah. That's yeah. what you do. You pass it yeah. down yeah. and you are, you're mentoring yeah. these kids and here. It really, I don't want to oversimplify, but it's really talking about love. Yeah. It's talking about yeah. our ability. You know, when we come down to it, when we actually look at Jesus's life and we actually look at scripture you know, what is it, the Matthew 22, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, yes. and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the verse after that, which I don't know that we always pay attention to, mm-hmm. all the law and the prophets. Yep. And on summed these up. Two yes. things. Summed up and Love now. God, love each other. Yep. So what I hear is you guys mm-hmm. saying, not only are we doing that uh, through music sometimes, sometimes mm-hmm. through speaking, uh, sometimes through relating to people after shows or relating to our families, mm-hmm. uh, making our families prize, all of that is this direction of saying we're going to love each other, and that's how we're also yeah. going to learn to better mm-hmm. love God. So do you see music as kind of, is music the medium 
D does music say things yes. more easily yes. when it comes to matters of love? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so. And I think people will afford you that four minute period of time mm -hmm. to say something that's even hard and awkward if it's coupled with the right sound, mm -hmm. you know, or the right melody mm -hmm. or the right note. So I think um, for us, it has been a conduit to be able to say, to speak about color, to speak about mm -hmm. ethnicity, to speak about mm -hmm. the love of Christ across boundaries, you know. Um, because people's hearts are normally a little wider when yeah. they're being serenaded. Music has this really powerful thing. I think it's one of God's most beautiful creations. And it has such a power to sort of find that little vulnerable spot in someone's heart and just yeah. just sit past it. Yes. And when it does, it yes. carries with it yeah. these life-changing words. Mm -hmm. I was telling somebody not too long ago that Christian music is the only genre that really doesn't define the musical style. Very true. You Very say true. jazz. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know what kind of yep. music. You say classical. When you say Christian music, you got me and her in the same boat. <laughs> so it's about the yeah. message. It is. it is. And it's one of the most beautiful mm -hmm. things. I love it because you have, you know, just all these beautiful mm -hmm. styles under this umbrella. Mm -hmm. It's the message that unifies. And you take a powerful life force mm -hmm. like music itself, and you put life-changing lyrics on that, you know, that's, there's, there's a revival right, right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. a, just yeah. a, a revival yeah. in our, mm -hmm. yeah. in our hearts, in our world, yeah. of our families, but then the greater world too, mm -hmm. which I think both of us are very mm -hmm. passionate about leaving a legacy, a legacy. of something Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Definitely. We're in a, un a unique time and place where music may be more necessary than ever in our culture, mm -hmm. uh, in our world, right? Everything is so uh, politicized yeah. often, or there are sides to everything. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about is music cutting to the core here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, one way that you guys have used music to cut to the core, to cut to the quick, to say this is what matters, is through your humanitarian efforts, yeah. uh, through your desire, and through um, your even provisions in partnering your music with different movements and different organizations and different uh, recommendations for your audiences mm -hmm. to come alongside and say, hey, we need to carve out some space. Our neighbors are in need. Yeah. So why do you think that's important? You can speak to any of those projects, but also speak to why is it important mm -hmm. that we carve out a space mm -hmm. that, that um, has room for looking uh, at the needs of our neighbors? Um, I think if we don't, I think we become like the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no outlet. And I think we're called to receive and to give. And I think our platforms are not the end all, they're just the, the they earn us the right to speak into other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So they earn us the weight so that we can take that weight and say, I'm going to spend this, the, the clout that I've earned here, I'm going to spend it on the poor, I'm gonna spend it on those who may not have a voice, those who might be marginalized. And for me, it's, you know, in mentorship, you know, I have, a nonprofit baby girls club and we've had team NCM that was under that umbrella as well. We have a model of it in the country of Belize and in Zambia mm -hmm. and we're praying to expand it as well. But it's a way for me to be able to um, speak up again for those who can't mm -hmm. and to to grow them in the faith, to grow them in the arts and the things that are really on their hearts. And so um, the music has been a conduit for that, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and it's a way for us to invite other people to get involved. And, and there's something that we can do. Um, I am very much an advocate for, for water. Mm. We gotta get water. We gotta right. get water places. Mm. And um, you know, there's women who play Russian mm. roulette with their babies every day when they go to get dirty water. Mm. We were, I was in Sierra Leone and I walked with a woman a mile. She, 50 pounds of water on it. Well, not at that. So then yeah. she got the water, which was filthy. Mm -hmm. They didn't even want me to stand in it. And I thought, you know what? If they're standing in it, I'm standing wow. in it. Wow. But they, I yeah. put that on my head. Mm. Did it break your neck? Yeah, just about. Yeah, I'm sure. And so I, she had to take it off, and she is like so tiny. And through the interpreter, she said, have you never carried water on your head? And I said, no, ma'am, I haven't. And she looked at me. Oh, this is all she did. Wow. And I thought, I don't want to be that person that doesn't know. I don't want those children to say, she could have done that, but she didn't. 
So that's, you know, the future are the children of our world. And I think any time in history when the enemy has sought to wipe out yeah. something really good, it's always the children. I agree. Yeah. So it's the children that we have Absolutely. to empower. So to get fresh and clean water is the first step. Yeah. And so I'm just and I love water. a, I'm a water huge yeah. Yeah, advocate love, for yeah. that. <laughs> huge love advocate it. for that. Mm-hmm. I applaud you. Yeah, and once we, there's a quote, I can't remember who it was, and it may have been Steve Martin, I don't know, but it's, it's like <laughs> once we know, yes. we no longer have, excuse right. right and that's often why we try to shield mm-hmm. ourselves from knowing it's a, it's a fear right? And, right and we live in i would say also a culture that loves to induce fear or i don't know if it yeah. loves to but it we live in fear so knowing mm-hmm. and you guys are helping people mm-hmm. know you're putting it in front of their faces yeah. and yeah. saying because they trust you mm-hmm. and you're doing it in a way that that is trustworthy but you're saying we no longer can can turn our yeah heads we to can this. we yeah. can no longer say nothing yeah mm-hmm. because they are our neighbors yeah and we're called to care for the orphans and the the widows the widows and the orphans yeah. yeah well and the way of life I mean you both experienced this out of the country and in different communities there's a translation of the Lord's prayer one of the Bible translations a newer one. Uh, you know, it says, Our Father, our name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? And it says, Give us this day, uh, give us each day what we need, no more, no oh, less. Oh, that's wow. And what I love about that is when we go out yeah. of our comfort zones, yeah. out of yeah. our yeah. suburban yes. community, is we see what it's actually like to rely on God for our provision. Yeah. Yeah. And that changes it does. suddenly, right? I right. would assume for you two ladies, yeah. how has yeah. that changed your perspective? in your families, but also, you know, we, we live a fairly posh life. Yeah. Yep. How does that change your perspective about everything from buying a new shirt to, you know, yeah. I mean. You know, I used to, I'm, I'm a chronic water runner. I, I tell you, I just like, I used to, you know, brush my teeth, mm-hmm. just let it run, let it run, let it run. It's like, get a little wet, turn off, wow. <laughs> brush teeth. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. I'm trying to make mm-hmm. those choices, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, just to keep me conscious, to keep me present. Um, so it's impacted me simply mm-hmm. in that way. Yeah. And yet, water is so life-giving. Mm. Um, and yet, it can be a flood. You know, it's true. a powerful true, true. source. It is. It's so life-giving. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, it's, I want to be aware and mindful of it, mm-hmm. even when I have plenty. Mm-hmm. Because then it keeps me mindful of those who don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, I think for me, especially when I go outside of the state into places like Africa, it reminds me that there, there's that upside down kingdom where the rich are poor and the poor are mm-hmm. rich. And how I find among those who don't have a lot, they're often good at taking a very little and doing a lot with it. Yeah. But we're guilty swear. of taking a lot and doing a very yeah, little yeah. with it, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's been convicting for me. And and then also, I think the thing of technology, I've always been a gadgeteer. <laughs> and whenever the latest gadget came out, I had to have it, you know, the latest <laughs> iPhone, you know. But honestly, even this is just a little corny thing, but for like the past several years, probably the last maybe four years or so, I've denied myself my upgrade plan. You know, and so for the longest I had my four, you know, then I finally went up to four S and everybody, my kids and family members and sisters are ragging on me like, you got that old phone, ha, 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 the camera anymore, ha, 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 ha. But it was just a thing of, I don't have to have it. Like, I can get yeah, it, yeah. but I don't have to get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be a slave to it. And that was mm-hmm. more of my, my heart, you know. I've upgraded recently because, you know, the camera and trying to periscope on a, you know, fuzzy mm-hmm. lens, okay, people didn't really appreciate it. However, I don't want to be a slave to it. I want to mm-hmm. be a slave to Christ and I want to mm-hmm. be a slave to other people mm-hmm. to serve and to help them. And so mm-hmm. I think my takeaway from being there is that you don't always have to have it just because mm-hmm. you can. And that, you that kind of, those kind of choices, like, you know, turn, just turn off the mm-hmm. water or yeah. carrying around a phone, which let's just <laughs> yeah. talk about that. I mean, yeah, right. yeah. but yeah. Anyway, yeah. just keeps you present. Yes, it is. Just keeps you present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, until there are no longer children that need sponsored, until there yeah. is fresh water everywhere, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. We will. Because we live in a very empowering society, a very self-empowerment. And, and I think there's important reasons for that. There have been people who have been oppressed too long and silenced mm-hmm. too long. It's important to find our voice. We talked so much mm-hmm. today about finding... Mm-hmm. Uh, 
about Sandy, finding your voice and your story, how key that has been in yeah. changing your family and, and all that. But what does that mean then? Slave to people, slave to Christ. Yes. I think I understand that a little yeah. bit. For you, slave to people. And, and for me, it's not a thing of me turning off my brain. It's not me being in fear to someone else but me choosing to serve, me choosing mm. to love, to love my neighbor the same way I would love myself. Mm -hmm. And we, we live in a narcissistic culture mm -hmm. where everything is done for me, you mm -hmm. know. But if I'm to love you the way I love me, if I'm a slave to me, I must at one point volunteer myself to serve you the way I would mm -hmm. serve myself. Mm -hmm. And that would look a bit like mm -hmm. slavery. You mm -hmm. know? And, I, and I'm not saying put me back in chains. I'm not mm -hmm. saying put my my you know, name, my neck in, in chains. I'm not saying that. I'm not being disrespectful, mm -hmm. even to our ancestors mm -hmm. or other people's mm -hmm. ancestors in this comment. But we are called to be slaves of Christ mm -hmm. and we're called to serve and to love each mm -hmm. other. I believe in the way that mm -hmm. would look to our society much like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I love, though, in that, and just in how you said it, there, at some point, there still is a choice for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, which is, I think, you know, God, he risked a lot when he gave us choice. <laughs> yeah. but, he's, but he did. Mm -hmm. And to choose to serve. I mean, I used to think for a long time, I used to see, like, meet and greets afterwards, mm -hmm. people taking stuff from me mm -hmm. because I didn't understand me well mm -hmm. enough. Now I feel like I can choose yeah. To give that. Absolutely. And it just changes everything. And I could not agree with you more. If we would approach every day and choosing to serve others, that's, if Jesus says it, why do we doubt it? Yeah. That is how they will know you are my followers. If you love, that's it. Mm -hmm. Not if you give me a list of rules and, yeah. you know. And love is inconvenient. You know, love is and so it's risky. It's risky. It's messy. It's yeah. it's expensive. <laughs> it, it it is. It really it just is. Time it's consuming. Very much so. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of love, mm -hmm. and that's what we're mm -hmm. called to do. Yeah. So so yeah. So yeah. I mean, we're free slaves. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, we're slaves right. to Christ. That's right. And you know, at the yeah. same time, we're heirs, joint heirs with Him, and we're sons and daughters. But... Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. Oh. So I'm part of the, the family, family, the family of God. <laughs> oh. You're welcome, Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs>